Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Kriegesmann. I'm working as a consultant and SOA architect for Software AG Germany. In the next few minutes, I'd like to present you a custom integration demo between the two products, Central Side Active SOA from Software AG and Layer 7 Secure Span Gateway. So, what is this demo all about? We want to show you a tighter integration between Secure Span Gateway and Central Side Active SOA registry and repository. We will start in a minute by developing runtime policies using Secure Span Manager. We then can export these runtime policies as reusable templates to the SOA registry. And from there, we can apply it to all existing services in the registry and then control the lifecycle and the service provisioning by design time policies from within Central Side. That allows you to develop a runtime policy once and apply it to many, many services inside of your registry. Let me explain you in detail the roles of the two components. So the role of Layer 7 Secure Span Gateway is all about security, runtime policy and SLA enforcement, threat protection, PKI trust management, and service mediation at runtime. The role of Central Side Active SOA is all about service asset and policy template management, lifecycle management, service lookup and provisioning. That means all your external partners will go to central site to identify and find the proper services, which is hosted by Secure Span Gateway. Then, of course, we will add design time governance, data validation, consistency checks. So, for instance, you cannot change the lifecycle state of a service if there is some mandatory data missing or the relationship to a consumer is not set properly and so on. And of course, we provide impact analysis, what's going on between the different assets in the registry and reporting capabilities that you can always generate and report about dependencies to hosted services. Let's go to the demo part of this presentation. So we will start with Secure Span Manager I guess at least the Layer 7 customers are quite familiar with this tool. So within Layer 7 Secure Span Manager, you see there is a, a custom template that is an initial policy that I have cre created and applied to a simple echo service. So what does this policy do? First of all, this policy requires authentication. So you have to provide WS Security Username Token credentials. Then we do an authentication against the internal identity provider, just for the demo purposes. And then we restrict the access to that business service by five invocations per minute for one identified user. So you can only invoke five times the service per identified users. Otherwise, you will get um, a response back and you can control the response by uh, adding some custom template here. Okay. If you're familiar with layer seven, you will probably notice that we don't have static values uh, inside these boxes here, but instead we use variables. And that is the important part of this demonstration. So all these variables that you see at the bottom of this policy, they have a leading comment called governed by central side. That means if you export this template and import it to the registry, Central side will fill in the data of these variables when deploying a new published service to Secure Span Gateway. So, for demo purposes, I can set here some static values. For instance, service quota exceeded response. This is a custom SOAP response with a message, let's say, maximum number of invocations per minute reached. You can change this within Central side later on. And of course, something that definitely will change for every service is the endpoint, the routing target. And this one points now to a simple echo service, which will just return the input of your service request. So if I go to SOAP UI, I can already test this simple template. So as you can see here, this is the SOAP request. This is the client request. And the payload is just an in element that contains some dummy message. And this message will be returned by the backend service. So 
So if I invoke it, you will see there's the out message, dummy in, dummy out. And if I evoke it five times, we are still fine. But if I invoke it for the sixth time, you will see that Secure Span Gateway is returning this customized SOAP message with the statement, again, maximum number of invocations per minute breached. So this is the starting point. So it's nothing special yet for layer seven customers. The interesting part uh, starts when you export this policy. So you can use it as a template now, and let's say export this policy to a central site or to the file system directly. Once it is there, you can import it directly into a central site. Let me explain you a little bit about central site. Central site is a SOA registry that consists of metadata, policies, lifecycle states, um, permissions for users and groups. And as you can see here, we're on the type management page. In the type management page, you see all the objects that are available in central site. Of course, one of the most important object types is the service itself. But also, we can uh, extend the, the metadata within central site, add new types. And I have added for this early integration prototype new two new types. One of them is the layer seven policy template, which actually stores the policy template from secure span within our repository, and also the layer seven variable. That is uh, an object that takes care of the variable names within the policy template and later on, before you deploy it, of the extraction mode. So what you always want to do, you want to inject values in your template. And these template values must come from some source. And this source is in, inside of an object of the registry. So for instance, a service. So we will start now by importing this policy template. So we can create now a new asset of the type layer seven policy template, and then upload the file from the file system or directly from, from layer seven, Secure Spin Manager. This is very simple. You just have to create the object, give it a name, five invocations per minutes and users template, and then you can attach the file from the file system. So it's nothing special, but it's important that it, this object is created. The next thing you will do um, is probably apply this policy template to another service inside the registry. And here we provide simple searching capabilities uh, that you are familiar with, let's say from search engines like Google. You type in a keyword and you get the proper list of results. And you see inside the registry, there's a very simple service. It's called the simple addition service. Um, it just adds two numbers. So what we will do next is uh, virtualize this service. What is a virtual service? A virtual service is actually a proxy object that consists of the same interface as the backend service, but you can add some additional metadata. For instance, you can add some runtime policies, you can add a layer seven policy template, and later on you will see in the metric section of a proxy service, um, the invocation statistics. So average response time, average fault count, total fault count, and things like that. And in our case, the in internal concept of a virtual service represents the newly created published service on Secure Span Gateway. So later on, you will see a published service on Secure Span Gateway having the same name as this virtual service that we create right now. So I call it simple addition service, and then I add some comment. This proxy service represents published service on SSG. Okay. Once we have created this virtual service, we need to configure it. The first thing that we will do, we will go to the tab called layer seven configuration. Within the tab layer seven configuration, we can link this virtual service to an application server as an object. This one represents the secure span host. And also we can refer to our template. So if we open up this dialog, 
you will see you again have some search facility that allows you to browse within the registry for all available Layer 7 policy templates. At the moment, we only have this one. And once I have selected the template, I will immediately see that the policy extracts, analyzes the template, and extracts all the variables that are found in the template, which should be governed by Centricide. So if I go to the Association tab, I will see all the impact and all the relationship of this asset. So you will see this published service will later on be deployed on ssgclustersoftwareag.com, which is the secure span host. And also you will see that I'm using this um, template right now. The new information is that you will also see there are two layer seven variable objects which were automatically created on the fly and they refer to this uh, service. So for instance, if we click on the service endpoint, if I click on the service endpoint, you will see this variable and you see the configuration of the variable. You will see that it's related to a virtual service, which represents the published service on the SSG. You will also see that the uh, service binding of the backend service of our simple addition service was automatically injected and the extraction method is endpoint. So that means um, when I deploy, when I deploy my virtual service as a published service to a secure span gateway, all the variables will be analyzed all the extraction methods will be executed and the values will be then injected into this template and this template is deployed as a published service on the SSG under the name of the virtual service. Sounds a little bit complex, but it's definitely not so complex and you see the result. So if I go back now to my virtual service and change the lifecycle state to deploy to SSG, and if I then switch over to Secure Span Manager and refresh this view here. You will now see, and hopefully this makes everything clear, that a new published service was created having the same name as the virtual service and everything um, has the same structure and uh, the, the same content as in our original template, except for the values of these variables. So the response template is still the same because we didn't change it. So it's still the same as before. But the service endpoint is not a static text value that was reused. This one came from the extraction method as specified in the layer seven variable in the registry. So that means during deployment, again, during deployment, the endpoint was extracted from the service object in the registry and injected during deployment. That also means the control of the endpoints is still uh, in the hands of the owner of the backend service. So if he decides, if he decides to change the endpoint or update the, the WSDL, you will immediately also see this new endpoint after redeployment to SSG. And we can now use SOAP UI again to test it. And as you can see here, now it's a completely different service with a very simple interface. It's a simple addition service. We want to add five and eight. And as you can see, it's not a fake. It's really the service. It calculates together. I'll probably use something different than 13. And if I invoke it more than five times, you see I get back the response, policy falsified. So I'm not allowed to invoke this service also more than five times. So what we did, we applied one policy template already to another service inside of the registry. You can also control um, the deprovisioning of the lifecycle um, by changing the lifecycle state to undeployed. So if you go back to undeployed, you will remove it again from the SSG. The interesting thing is now, um, this registry is intended to be used for a couple 
tons of services inside your organization. So you can control permissions, visibility of assets, and also uh, provide different views on assets to different groups of users. So if I go to the permission tab and say, let's add our partner group as potential consumers of this service, I first select the proper group here in central sites, and then I say they only they only are allowed to see the specification of it, the business specification of it. So I can go to specification, enable the few rights. And if I then log in um, as a partner, as a potential consumer, and browse the whole list of services in the registry, you will see that I only see small versions of this object. So now the consumer only sees the specification of the object. And if he wants to register as a consumer, so he can read the documentation. And the good thing is about this integration showcase, if he decides now to register as a consumer, as a potential client of that service, he will be immediately bound to the service, to the published service hosted by SecureSpan Gateway and not the business backend service. So they are completely separated and different type of users get different type of information of the service objects in the registry. In case you want to see how everything is tied together, you can also open up the impact graph and you will see here's our published service. At the bottom you will see, um, at the, bottom you will see uh, the relationship to the SSG host. On the left, you will see the relationship to the reused uh, template. At the top, you see the relationship to the backend service. And on the right, you see the two variables that we use to configure the published service. So I hope you like my little demo. If you want to get further information about Layer 7 and Software G, so just come and visit our home pages. And also you can ask your local sales representative about uh, using this integration between the two products. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Bye-bye.